Good morning. So I'm Francis Day and today's topic of conversation is around market segmentation, otherwise known as niching or finding your niche. Or if you're American, your niche. Uh, so I'm going to share with you eight different ways of um, being able to niche your subject or your target market and uh, the benefits to you as a business owner. Also at the end of the video, I'll give you some examples of how people are doing this. Um, really clever ways of really um, focusing on their target audience. So, um, example number one is you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, you can, as long as you're consistent and you're communicating in the same way regularly, uh, you need to be comfortable with that particular medium. So you could write a blog, you could do regular videos, uh, you could do a presentation. And as long as you're getting known for that one thing that you do really, really well, people will know how you like to communicate and they will invite you in to, to present in that particular way, if you're a presenter, of course. And the other thing I want to say is that absolutely everyone can have a niche. I don't care what industry you work in, um, you know, you can absolutely have a niche area to work in. So number two is that the benefit of having a niche is that you get really good at what you do. You hone your craft. You have practiced it and got it right. Um, so, of course, you become an expert in your field. Number three is that you develop a reputation for doing that one thing really, really well. Number four, and I think this is where I fell um, at the hurdle really. So I used to run a marketing company years ago and the example that I'm going to give you is I would go in and see clients, find out what they wanted and then almost I call it give away my uterus to try and please the customer. Um, and actually by becoming really good at what you do and serving one area, they come to you because you're the expert. So this one is about not having to adapt your style to accommodate the customer. And it's really important because otherwise you just end up being that busy fool. Um, so make sure that you're giving results for one particular area. Number five is that your systems become much more automated. So imagine in my field, imagine that you work in marketing and you specialise in getting results for restaurants, say. Um, you've got some tried and tested things in your, in your armoury, haven't you? Uh, perhaps it's about the customer experience, what happens as they walk through the door, how you encourage them to rebook, there's a discount system, a loyalty system, all that sort of thing. Um, and you can really build on what works because you've done the tried and tested stuff. And of course, because it's worked for one restaurant, it means that it's going to work for another one. You see what I mean, don't you? And number six is that you serve your customers better. So if, you're, if you've got a niche area and um, you get an inquiry through the door, you've probably got some sort of system in place uh, it might be like an automated questionnaire that you give them right at the beginning of the of the journey so that you can see exactly where their um, weak areas are and you can focus on that bit pretty early. I think the questionnaire thing really works well with service provider industries like accountants or solicitors, that sort of thing. Um, so uh, you see what I mean? You've, you've got that, that very slick system that takes them on a journey from when they first meet you through to the end so that you're measuring the results and the outcomes that you give them. Number seven is an absolutely crucial one. So it's you can raise your prices because there's no competition. 
So if you think about this, uh, let's say um, you're an expert in, let's use the print industry, uh, because that's renowned for being fairly competitive on price. Let's say that you've got a really great slick system for creating menus, talking about the restaurant trade. Um, and you just need a client to update their seasonal menu into a system and it does it automatically for them um, because you've already got a template there where you're just changing the words. Can you see how slick and easy that is? It means that you're not having to spend lots of face-to-face -face time with the client. There's a little system where they just upload the words and it automatically changes the font style and that sort of thing. So the systems have become really slick and really easy. Now because of this, you can charge a premium for that service because the customer feels like they're in control. You've developed a relationship with them. Um, they may go to another printer, it may be cheaper, but actually because they haven't got that very slick process in the background, they perhaps deliver late, um, there's a typo that's not been checked properly um, because they don't know you, you know, you, you don't know them, sorry, better, all that sort of thing. Can you see how by creating the slick systems, it eliminates the, the human error parts of the process? Ultimately, by having a really strong niche, you can lead more, earn more and win more. So it's like, what's not to like about having a niche area? I also want to tell you that just because you have a niche area doesn't mean that you can't serve all the other um, clients, all the other customers that you have, but it just means that you've got the reputation for doing that one thing really well. I'm gonna come on to number eight in a little bit. At the bottom of this video is a link to a free download that I'm offering to you. Um, it's five days to really help you work through your um, niche area, your zone of genius, the thing that you do really, really well. Um, so go ahead, download it, and um, I'll, I'll look forward to working with you on those areas. Another way that you can look at uh, segmenting or um, you know, niching your market is uh, I like to use the three M's, so market, media, message. So your target market might be very specific. You might only serve a particular area. Um, so who are that ni who's that niche market? Uh, the next one is media. So how do you communicate with them? So you might just communicate with them on Facebook because you know that that's where they are, because you like doing Facebook Lives, because that's your comfort zone. Um, for instance, you know, if it's, um, if it's people over 50, then you know that uh, that's where, predominantly where they're gonna be on Facebook out of the social media areas. I'm going to do another video a bit later on about where you would find your target markets. And then message is, what do you have to share that differentiates you from the competition? What's unique about you? What's your background? What are all those layers? And I just want to say that even if you feel that there isn't really very much between you and the competition, usually as a service provider, it's you that's different and no one else will communi communicate it in quite the same way that you do. So we're nearly coming to the end now. Uh, right at the very end, I'm gonna give you some examples of how people are, are micro-niching. Um, but I'm gonna share with you number eight now. And I think number eight is the most important. And it's, it's because you've become specialist in your field in that particular area, you get better results for your clients because it's tried and tested. You know what works. You know what doesn't work. And it's never about you, it's always about them. 
And guess what? If you're getting great results for your clients, they're gonna tell friend, their friends about it and there's nothing more powerful than that, than word of mouth marketing. You, you reduce your marketing costs, you have they, you have them spreading your, um, you know, spreading your expertise. And of course, they're going to know people in the industry that they will recommend you. So finally, I'm going to share with you some of the um, companies that are really niching in their field. Just to give you a few ideas, I suppose, really, about how they're doing it well. So a bakery that only sells gluten-free bread. That's a great, you know, and of course that's very topical right now, isn't it? Um, how about an accountant that specialises in um, franchisees, franchise owners of businesses? That's a great example of um, niching. Um, what about a printer? A printer that just does flyers. I know of a printing company that just does flyers. Uh, a great way of niching. And finally, another example is a law firm that specialises in emigration. You can imagine the systems and processes that they have in place to specialise in emigration, can't you? So I hope that's given you loads of food for thought. Um, I know that everyone can have a niche and it just it turns your business around so what's not to love about it uh, and if you think it's not for you i promise you it is so um go ahead click on the link below leave your details and go on that little complimentary five-day journey with me i hope you enjoy it i look forward to seeing you again soon bye bye